Andrew McCart, IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Delighted to be joined by Danny Vaughan. Danny, this is the weirdest interview I've ever done with you. Normally I'm in your gym or I'm at shows with you, but obviously with the current crisis that's going on at the moment, this is the way, this is the future. But first and foremost, how are you and the family? How's the, you, Sandra, and the, Dom and that? Lewis? Yeah, we're, we're all right, Andrew. We're healthy, which is the main thing with what's going on all around the world. And people dying left, right and centre. It's scary to him. scary times. But look, we're all healthy. So, you know, we're doing the best we can. Obviously, there's a lot of boredom in the house. There's six of us in the house. So, you know, we are getting on each other's nerves here and there and stuff. And Dominic and Lewis are bugging me with things they're doing. But look, um, we're all trying to help each other in the situation. And we're staying home, which is the best thing to do. Washing our hands all the time. We're abiding by the rules and we're healthy. And I hope everybody else is and stays healthy. Definitely. It's kind of hard for me to sort of like to try and talk boxing with you, obviously, with the, what's going on and stuff like that in the world. But I suppose I'm going to stop. I'm, I am. I'm going to talk boxing with you. So the boys have released a statement, I think it was yesterday, saying that they've cancelled all shows in May. Uh, there was meant to be an MTK Scotland show April 11th, I think it was, but that's been cancelled. How is that affecting you as well? And have you spoke to any of the fighters that you manage and obviously the fighters that you train? How are they coping with this situation? Everyone's pulling their hair out, to be honest, Andrew, because I had Sam Maxwell and Sean McComb over here for five weeks, living with me over in Glasgow. Obviously, he's from Belfast and Liverpool. I know there's thousands of boxers living in the same boat. But um, it's very, very hard because our life is boxing. That's all we know. I mean, that's what you do for a living. We talk boxing 24-7. We're still on group chats talking every single day, posting things to each other, trying to keep everyone... It can't be people off the post, but you, you, you know, you get what I'm saying. I think I think but, I know. <laughs> it's very, very hard to um, stay focused, but the lads know the score. I mean, isolation to us, for me and you, is really hard. But when, when you think about it, if a boxer's really, the really um, dedicated boxers come on camp, and you, you probably do it most of the last, most of the year, four times a year, most of them. Like I know Sean and Sam, like when they're up in the house in Glasgow in the gym, they don't go out much anyway, Andrew. You eat, sleep and train and that's all we do, you know. So them lads would probably do it more easier than likes of ourselves, you know me. I want to talk about Sean McComb. I want to talk about Sean McComb just now, obviously. He had a huge fight coming up, probably his biggest test to date, um, against Craig Evans. What's his so like if you, what's his mindset going forward? Because he's like he was chomping at the bit to get 2020 off to a good start and big, big, big fights at the tail end of the year. How how's his mindset? What's how's he been? John's a very positive type of kid anyway. Yeah. He doesn't let nothing get him down. He's took the positive side of it. Obviously, you can spend more time with your mum, your dad and stuff. Because they're always away and he's got a new girlfriend. So, he'll probably be in isolation with her as we speak. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but there's positive to take out. No, but Sean's very positive anyway. And the thing is, is he's still checking over. He's still getting out doing his runs. He's still on his diet. Um, so, he'll be taking over ready to go again. But... He was looking really good. I mean, but he was actually in Manchester when all the MTK shows had just gone in. We'd spark and come down and spoke to me, good mate Jamie Moore. And we've been down there, sparring Jack Catch up. The mm -hmm. spars were great. He was spar Jack on the Monday. We were going to go back on the Wednesday and then spar Terry Flanagan on the Friday down in Manchester. I've been speaking to Steve Mailer, who was another good friend of mine. And everything was going good, you know, when it's, I can't say too good, but everything was just coming together. The sparring was great. His weight was bang on, and it's just a kick in the teeth. But it's one of them things. But you know, you've got to take the positive side of it, haven't you? I suppose yeah. Sam's in the same boat. I mean, I because I've seen his Instagram stories and his, his videos that Sam's doing. Like that, that guy just doesn't stop training. Like he's no matter where he is in the world, what time of day it is, he'll be lifting a dumbbell, he'll be skipping, he'll be doing something. He's just one of them kids. So he seems don't to have a positive him, mindset. Don't have him kidding you. It's called, what's this thing they're all on called TikTok or something? Oh, TikTok, yeah. <laughs> I think you do one exercise, it makes you look like you've done about 25. I don't know, I'm not into all this. <laughs> but I've just seen him sprinting up the um, up the street there. So I'm speaking to Sam regularly as well, and he's, he's taken over. He's in a big fight. Obviously, there's a lot of talk. I've seen Twitter yesterday. Obviously, all you're doing is looking at your phone by the minute. A lot of talk about Sam fighting Robbie Davis this year. I'm seeing different people yeah. putting things up, tagging me in. So just while we're talking about it, I'll, I'll talk about it. It's a massive fight for Liverpool, massive fight for boxing, 
Sam's unbeaten. I think Robbie's been British Commonwealth European champion. He's only lost to Ritson. Sam's unbeaten. The fight makes sense. It'll be a great fight to do, you know, sometime this year. I mean, with the boat, with the right people. Eddie works alongside MTK Global. Frank Warren, MTK Global will be the middle. And let's get the fight sorted, what all people are looking for. And that's what the fight fans want. And that's what we want as coaches and boxers. You want to fight the best. Robbie's one of the best. Sam is up there with them all. So for us as MTK Scotland, we'll take the fight that happened. You, I said, you sent out a tweet saying this is the time for... And, sorry, and this is not me being disrespectful. I've knew Robbie and his dad and everyone for years. You know, his dad was a family friend. It's just boxing. So while there's a lot going on in this isolation, you're, all, you're making fights in your head all the time and, and everything. But this is a fight what Liverpool would want to see. And it's a great, great fight. And may the best man win. Definitely. Well, that, that's a sort of fight that I never saw coming. Because you sent out a tweet the other day that I think it was three... Two, three days ago, you said, right, now's the time that promoters and managers and stuff like that will be bored at their head. So which fights do you fans want to see? And there was people tweeting you saying they want to see this and want to see that. Um, did, did that fight pop in your head when you sent that tweet? Is that sort of like a fight, Robbie Davis Jr. and Sam Max? Has that been a fight on the cards for a while now? You know what? It, we were in Manchester the other week, and that was all the talk from Manchester in the gym. We were in Liverpool. We were staying in Liverpool, sorry, and going back up to Manchester to spar, and then... Um, that's the fight everyone's talking about at the minute. I think Sam's got a fight coming up. Uh, Robbie's got a fight coming up, I think. You know, when all this madness is put up uh, aside. And let's make the fights. I mean, I'm not here to call anybody out. I'm, I'm, you know, it's not, my, it's not my style. I just want my lads to get where other people are. And this is genuine for me. 50-50 fight in my eyes. The experience is with Robbie. The punch power is with Sam. So it's, it's a no-brainer, really. These fights should happen. It's a fight that Sam needs as well because Sam needs that big name and so that maybe a breakout fight. Like Sean McCombs got his breakout fight against Craig Evans. This will put him in sort of like that UK, Britain, Ireland, European level sort of thing. And same as uh, Sam Maxwell. Like I, I, I want Sam to fight. When you sent out that tweet, I sent out something like, I want Sam Maxwell versus someone like Ivan Branchek. Remember the IBF? Yeah. The Josh B, that's, that's, another, sort of like, that's another great fight. I mean, I took Sam Sparrow to Lewis Ritten for a week. We were down there. We sparred twice with my good mate down there, Neil Fannin and Lewis. Lovely, lovely people. And, um, you know, Sam's old, old as all man, you know, and more. And Lewis, it was a great, great spar. So you're looking at levels in boxing. And that's what I said to you the week. Now I haven't got as many fighters. I can take my lads, jump in the car and go and travel and spar the best. That's what we're doing, going down sparring young Jack Katso. And we've done it with Lewis. So... For me, I can't hold back, and MTK can't hold Sam back anymore. He's 31, he's ready to be off, let off the lease, so to speak, and he's ready for all the big names, so we're ready to do it when anyone else is, else is you know. You mentioned there that you, you, you've got a small sort of stable of fighters now. Are you planning on taking anyone in? Is there anyone that's coming along? Danny, you got anything you want to tell me? Any secrets? Any gossip? Anything? I've got one coming. I've got a boxer coming. Yeah, he'll be, get all this madness out of the way and then um, I'll have another boxer coming here. Um, I've been in talks with someone now, so it looks like I'll be adding another one, maybe two to the stable. Can you tell me now? Tell, can you tell me now? Uh, can you tell me offline? I'll be in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Um, I guess, like I say, like, the shows have been cancelled all the way through May. Have you had, sort of like, with MTK Scotland and MTK Global as a, as a company, have, are, are you planning for shows in June still, or are you sort of holding back until... All this has sorted itself out. Obviously, every manager and everyone, all the promoters, all got an email of Robert Smith, the British Boxing Board of Control, a couple of days ago, just saying that all shows now are cancelled in May. So, as you know yourself, is you'd have to be training in May to fight in June or July. So, all the lads are ticking over. Every one of our boxers, MTK Global, Scotland, wherever you are, Liverpool, have all been told to keep training. It's a phone call away to say, look, it's where the next dates are. And and whatever else, but I've heard a couple of rumours that shows could be on closed doors, the first couple of shows, and just take the year as we go. I mean, I'm just praying that it doesn't get held back any longer because you've got them big shows coming in August, July, August, which is a massive for MTK with world title fights and everything else. So I just pray for everyone, you know, what, what would, what's our Saturday night like now? I don't know what to do with myself. I've got no boxing, I've got no football. I'm taking the dog out when I should be sitting watching the box. You must be. I know it's probably bad to say, but 
talking about football as an Evertonian Liverpool situation with the league, are you half half gutted for them or what? What's the situation with there? Like it couldn't have been any couldn't have been any better for me. Like if we want to avoid the league now, listen, let's do it because I couldn't go good down to Liverpool for about a year once they win the once they win the league. I was going to swear them. But um, <laughs> on the group <laughs> chat, Martin Mar- will be unbearable. It will be unbearable. You will have to see. Listen, I'm on that Twitter and I do have a little noise up. I wind them up like they do with me. I've got Billy who backs me up, Tony Bellew, and I've got England coach Paul Wormsley. I mean, meet Robert Starkey on. Twitter, we're four Evertonians. We're bitter. If it, if it, I'll, t- I'll tell you, we're bitter. We don't like Liverpool. We don't want to see them in the league. But listen, it's not our call, is it? I'm here and it's going behind closed doors. We're in England play. I tell me, and that's where they're supposed to be playing the game. So I think there'd be riots in the city if Liverpool didn't get to pick the cup up. As long as it's not a good decision, you know. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Not happy, no. Not happy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you're a manager as well as a coach, and you shot like. You're the main man at MTK Scotland anyway, but mm-hmm. besides that, you going back to that tweet that you sent out, you said that which fights would you like to see as a manager right now? You've got a lot of time on your hands, even though I have seen you doing a little bit, a couple, couple of workouts in your gym, but you've got some time on your hands now. In your head, what fights do you want to see or what fights are you planning for or hoping to plan or hoping to see this year? You know, um, obviously we're on the boxing circular and it was out last week and it put Scott Fitzgerald Anthony Fowler, Kieran Smith, and JJ Metcalf all into four. Um, I'm happy to put. I'm, I'm managing Kieran Smith. I've spoke to MTK Global. We're happy to Kieran to fight anybody. Kieran, I've spoke to Kieran. He's up for fighting any of them lads. They're all we respect them all. They're all friends of mine. All great fighters. But Kieran Smith from Scotland is ready to come down and fight. Wherever, wherever we have to travel, we'll come. Mm-hmm. So Kieran's ready. I've been looking at that. Um, You've got Lee McGregor who's chomping at the bit for the European title shot. So, you know, there's, there's a good few where we, you know, we're ready to go and travel and fight anyway. And I'd be happy with really. I've got to say, Dan, I'll give Sandra a big thanks for uh, setting us up because you're a digital hand grenade. I've done it. You've done it all so by yourself. <laughs> I haven't got a clue. <laughs> I haven't got a clue. Obviously, it's been made again. But this is Sandra's little office in the house, which is... Um, She's in all the time because she's always busy. I'm, I'm around doing the ironing and the, and the oven around the house and stuff, you know. No, no listen, I am. Listen, I've had to take, you know, quality time out my time and help out around the house as well. You know, you've got to do it. You can't just be a boxing coach all the time. You know, I've, I'm a domestic man as well. So fair play to all these women out there. People don't realise how hard they work. Mm-hmm, Especially around the house. Obviously, just... Going about the, like I saw you in the gym with Cliffy doing a couple of things. Are you, are you going to the gym as often as you can? Obviously, behind closed doors, just you in there. I think the gym's, locked, the gym's locked and um, there's no one can get in the gym, but Martin lives in the gym. The house is next door to the gym, so we can go from the house into the gym and not actually opening the gym up. So, yeah, we've been training every single day. Every day, me, Martin, and Sandra, and me, daughter, Natalia, yeah, we're in the gym every day training, getting a couple of runs in here and there, and you know. Keep myself fit. And it's the mind, isn't it? I mean, healthy body, healthy, healthy mind. You've just got to be positive and try and do as much as you can. Obviously, you've got to be abide by the rules, but, you know, you can sneak out here and there, can't you, and go for walks. And, and <laughs> you're, allowed, you're allowed to do your exercise. You know, you, you can go out yeah, and do your exercise. Because I'd go around the bend if I wasn't training, to be honest, Andrew. Well, that's what I was saying. That's what I was saying. Are you still going to the gym? Because I've seen a couple of videos yeah. you put out. Because you must be, you train quite a lot. You're, you almost live in the gym during the day. Yeah. I mean, you're there early morning with your fighters, you train your fighters, and then there's classes at night. Yeah, and, yeah. and I'm out, we've just got a little jog loma, a um, yeah. little pit bull, well, it's a pocket pit bull, but um, she likes getting walked 45 minutes an hour every day, so I've been getting involved with her now as well. Probably good. watch on burning 500 calories here and there, so it's all, it's all good, it's all good. Definitely. Like, well, like I say, all the shows have been cancelled, I'm pulling, I'm pulling my hair out. If I pull any out, because I'm not, there's, you know me, Dan, I love boxing, man. The fact that I can't, yeah. there's no boxing on, I can't. It's, it's really, really hard time, isn't it, at the minute? But, you know, you're hearing that many people dying and stuff yeah. like that. And, you know, as long as we're healthy, that's the main thing, because people are worse off than us right now. So we're blessed to be sitting here in this crazy time, because I never, ever in my lifetime thought I'd see stuff going on like this. It's mental. So, obviously, boxing comes secondary, but we are boxing men. It is our job. It's our living. 
and we just want to see a track on and everything running as quickly as possible. Definitely. Well, I've got to ask you, Billy, the, uh, Billy, Danny, I was going to talk about Billy, the phone is there. Um, Billy looks like he's got his license suspended by the, the British Boxing Board of Control. I mean, this fight with Canelo has obviously been cancelled due to the, this uh, global crisis that's going on at the moment, but did you, did you see uh, Billy's video and what's your thoughts on it? You know what, Billy's Billy, you've got to know Billy's personality to see what he was doing. Like, there was never any harm or intention to make him swim and to be nasty or anything there. I mean, people can take things out of context. Billy's Billy, we know he takes things a bit too far and stuff, but he's one of the funniest fellas you'll ever meet. And people who don't know him, obviously, you see that Twitter, social media, too, which, you know, giving him all kinds of abuse. He just gives it back. But I think a lot of it was uncalled for. I think it was, um, it was a joke, sort of gone wrong, the way people have jumped all over it. You know, when you do it, if he does anything good, anything positive, you don't hear them then. But anything negative, it's the same thing. People jump all over it. But if you knew Billy as a person, he's an absolute gentleman. I've known him for a long time. And he was no malice and he was not, not on a good swim. Mm -hmm. It was just Billy being Billy. Well, Billy, talk about Billy being Billy. He's done an April Fool's on Coogan Cassius. I don't know if you've seen what he's done with Coogan. He's put out on Instagram nice. that it's Coogan's birthday and he's 41 years old. <laughs> and he's got everyone tweeting and messaging Coogan. Happy yeah. birthday, Coogan. See what I mean? It's my birthday. <laughs> See what I mean? And I, I love the way it's affected Bill as well. Like the boxing, like, you know, that was the biggest fight in his life. He's fighting pound for pound. Um, number one, Mr. Canelo. You know, if anyone can beat Canelo, it's Billy with his style. But, um, it's just one of them things, and that'll happen. Hopefully, that happens before the end of the year. That's the fight we all want to see. So, just hope to God that happens. Definitely. Well, Danny, before I let you go and walk the dog and do some more ironing and hoovering and whatever else you're doing yes, in the house, what's your final <laughs> thoughts to everybody? Doing the, <laughs> what's your your final? So, you got any messages for the people watching this? And your final thoughts? Yeah, my final thoughts is, I mean. If I'm dead honest, when I first started the uh, COVID-19, the uh, coronavirus, I, I was not, not saying not taking it serious, but I was just saying, yeah, 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 you know, it's just going to blow up. Didn't realise how bad it was. I mean, it's crazy what's going on around the world. And, like, there's a couple of people who you know, friends from Liverpool, who family have died the last couple of days. So it does come home to you when you realise, you know, it is close to home and it is on your doorstep. And uh, to all the people from NHS, they just be us. My advice for everyone is to stay in as much as you can, wash your hands, stay healthy, and bye by the rules, and everyone should be all right. Definitely. Well, Dan, I'll phone you in a minute, mate. I want to know who this boxing is that's coming to the gym. So, as always, <laughs> thanks for this fight for TV, and uh, hopefully we'll get a proper interview, a face-to-face -face, face -to -face interview uh, shortly, anytime soon, so that'll be good. But like Any always, time, Danny. Any time at all, and uh, stay healthy, keep your training, you're looking well, and I'll speak yeah. to you soon, my friend. Thank you very much, Dan. I appreciate Bye. that. Speak to you soon, my man. Cheers. Bye bye. See you soon. Bye bye. Yeah.